Good evening everyone. Thank you all so much for joining in um, this evening and we're going to start sitting up on our eggs. So if you have any knee problems or ankles or sore or that you can sit on a chair. So we're going to take the legs out wide. Feel that they're not close and tight. They're going to extend and cross at the, at the shins and then feel that we're lifting up tall. So you can use the hands either side of the hips there to get that upward lift through the crown of the head. And then roll the shoulders back and down. Good, maintain that lift. Moving the sacrum forward and getting the lift from the pubic bone to the navel and the navel to the chest. And then feel it more widening and broadening across the collarbones. Allow the shoulder blades to move down the back. Good, and then keeping that lift, we're going to press the palms together, take the base of the thumb joint into the breastbone to get a further lift on the chest, and then elongate from the top of the shoulders down to the elbows. Good. Feel that the throat is soft. Allow the both eyes to close. So allow the top eyelids to move down. And then allow the eyes to move back. So these days we're all looking at computers and laptops and phones, so we're always leaning forward with the eyes. So just allow the eyes to become quiet. Allow the inner ears to become quiet. Releasing the tongue from the roof of the mouth to rest heavy in the lower jaw. And just feel where we're at this evening. Are we anxious? Are we tired? Just feel, observe the body. Focusing on the breath as it enters and leaves the body. So after the exhalation, we're taking a slow, deep inhalation through the nose. Breathing in energy into every muscle and cell in the body. And on the exhalation, releasing and letting go of any tension that we might have. So again, just after the exhalation, we're going to take another slow, deep inhalation. And just feel where the breath touches. In the body. And then a slow, soft exhalation. And just be with the breath. Good. And then we're going to release the hands down to the top of the knees, drop the chin towards the chest. Slowly open up the eyes and we're going to raise up the head. Good. And we're all going to come into Adamukha Parasana. So again, for us that don't um, come down easily, you can do it on a chair. I'm going to show us what the chair for us that don't come down to the floor. So we're going to come round. For us that come down easily, with the head supported, we're going to practice like so today. We're going to Open up the knees, have the big toes touching, and as you sit down between the both heels, don't allow the heels to keep rolling out. Feel that they're gripping on the sit bones there. Then we're going to extend forward over the bolster. So you're drawing the abdomen back there and allowing the head to come down. And if you want to bring the head to the side, you can. Each side there, whichever side, and keep extending the arms forward. But feel that you're not bringing the shoulders forward and you're making sure that the outer hips stay back and down towards the knees. So for us that don't come down to the floor, the shoulders here, and we would work. We would sit on one chair, then have another chair in front, like so, and you would have the 
The bones are coming right in again here towards the abdomen and then you're going to extend forward. So you can still get the exact same and you need to go higher up here if you can. If you don't allow your, you don't want to round to come down, you want to keep that long extension. You can ensure you keep the bolster nicely back. Good, so that'll be too high for me because in front of us, we might need more height. And again, you can build up blankets or whatever. So, add a look at for us. So, it's nice practice again. And then, we're going to keep that action. Stay where we are. Good. And then look forward again, spread the fingers out wide, feel that you're pressing the whole palm and the hands nice and firmly down into the mat, come up onto the knees, make sure the arms are firm, tuck the toes in and go up into Adamukha Swanasana, downward dog. So you're getting height in the hips. And again, elongate the arms. Make sure to bring your chin away from the chest to open the chest further towards the front of the thighs. Good. Feel the arms moving up into the shoulder sockets. You want to feel the legs, the femur heads moving into the hip sockets. And you're going to make the front of the thighs hip strongly back. So broaden the back of the thighs. Lift the toes up. Keep pressing the heel of the hands onto the mat as you get more extension in the front body. And then open the back of the legs. Good, so go on, get more height, get the buttocks lifting higher. Good, then we're going to walk forward and take you to the asana. As you lift and forward, move the dorsal up. So for us that don't come forward easily, we're going to again use a chair or we're going to use the wall. Alicia, you will be using the wall. So, or the chair. So you're going to make sure again that, that the dorsal area stays deep in. You're working the legs really strong. Good. Backs of the knees is open. Two sides is even. Look forward and come all the way back up. Good. So again, props is very useful. Especially when you're practicing from home and you're not in a class situation where you have a teacher to come and uh, adjust us and help us there. So it's good to use whatever props we've got. Chairs, walls, blocks, whatever. It's just like um, in these times when we're not um, in the class. So we're going to join the both feet together. So lying the big toes up with the other heels. And again, if you need to have support and you're not steady, and your practice just yet, you know, you can always stand with the chair here and your back to the chair. And then you would just take the hands back, lift the chest up, join both feet together. So the chair's there, the wall's there if you need it. And you're going to, again, get firmness in the outer hips. Try to get extension more from the inner heels to the inner groins, good. Roll the shoulders back and feel that we're shifting the weight back onto the heels. So again, we'll say that the eyes moving forward, we're going to try to get everything again to move back. So you're making the top thighs hip back, rolling the top of the shoulders back and down, drawing the abdomen back, tuck the chin in and take the head slightly back. And lengthen the arms down low. Good. Tadasana or mountain pose. So from here we're going to do um, Rikshasana or three pose. So again for us that do not um, come into this pose easily, you could either have the back to the wall there or you could stand with the feet together in Tadasana there and bring up your right foot. And as you bring up the right foot again, feel that stretch from the inner groin to that inner knee. And then press against that knee and then draw the right buttock deep in to the, the hip. Draw it right in the hip. So again, keep 
Turning the whole trunk and chest to face front. Good. Feel that action. This is where we're working. Ground to the inner knee and then you're going to bring the foot up. Keep working that standing leg and extend the arms up. So again, stay with the chair. Use the wall, whatever you need. Go on extending the left. First is fairly new to yoga and haven't done much practice. And especially if you're practicing for the first time online, it's very hard to, to feel where we need to work. And then come all the way down and join the feet together. We're going to go to the other side. Okay, you would just move your chair to the side. Stand on Tadasana. Feel that like your chair is there not just to prop us up but to make us do more work or feel where the body responds best. So turn the whole of the left leg out. Again, feel that stretch from the inner groin to the inner knee and then just moving round with the outer knee towards your outer left buttock. It has to go deeper. So the knee has to come out more, chest is lifted. Good. For us that need to stay there, do so. If not, then we can maybe take the foot on up here to do the full process. So focus on something in front there and go on extending the arms. Feel that length in the sides of our trunk. You want to lengthen the sides of the waist. Shoulders relax down. Good. Relax the facial muscles. And then come all the way down and join both feet together. Back into um, Tadasana. So extend the arms forward, interlock the fingers right up into the, the webbing of the fingers there. Extend and lengthen, good, and go up. Don't elongate the arms, keep the front ribs back, thighs moving back, good. Look up at the hands and check if the thumb side of the hands extending to the ceiling. Shoulders relax down. And then come forward and we're going to change. So slip again. And put your right index finger was on top. Now you go for the left. Again, lengthen out long and go up. Again, feel that you're keeping the weight back onto the heels there. You're shifting the weight back, not letting the ribs push forward. Go on, lengthen the sides of the trunk up and then come forward and down, release down. So the next one we're going to practice is um, Parajvatanasana. So again for us to have a chair, you can use a chair, if you don't want to use a chair that's fine, you can start from the wall. So we're going to take our left foot back to the skating board, be in line with the middle of our mat and take the right leg forward and then glance this heel in line with heel. So turn the hips, get that grip and action on the outer hips there. Imagine we're thinning these outer hips and we're going to extend the arms up. Look up. So for us to use the chair, remember if you're concave on the back, um, that's fine. If not, you're going to use the chair and you're going to come forward to here. Now elongate the front body, draw that right hip back, stamp the both feet firmly down and move the breastbone forward. Good. So it's all about getting that extension and the front body. Now work the legs, look forward, get the hands to the seat of that chair and see can you slide on further forward. Draw that right hip back, left hip forward. So feel that whole left side of the trunk has to travel further. Go on extending, for us it can go down with the hands flat, Go down, if not, we're going to be staying up here. Keep an extension through the front body. Keep working the back leg. So the more you can bring the hands further past the foot, the easier it will be to go right down. And then come up, step, both feet together, and we'll do the other side. So again, we're going to be in the middle of the mat there, hands on the waist, Bring our right foot back and extend the left leg forward. And as you extend again the left leg forward, 
Plant down and see his heel and line with heel. If our heel and line with that step, and then bring this right hip more forward, left hip back. Stamp the feet firmly down. Extend the arms up, inhale, and as we exhale, extend and lift. Reach forward, look forward over the top of that chair. Draw that left hip back and the right hip more forward and lift. Good, so here we're just halfway. Then we're going to extend the arms further over the seat. So you want to feel that stretch from the knee right up to that left buttock. It has to spread and up. Back legs strong. Abdomen soft. And come down if you can. Walk the hands more forward and lengthen the whole front body. Don't be in no hurry to bring the head down. Don't do a nose dive there. Just keep lengthening more forward if you feel that it's easier to stay with us. Good. And then come up, step, both feet together, and come back to Tadasana. Well done, everyone. So we're going to practice now um, our Dishandrasana. We're going to have a break to our right side. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be here in the middle of our mat. And we're going to raise the arms up now, bend the knees, jump and spread the feet apart. And um, with any injuries, you can step out. So again, as you take the legs wide, feel that lift from the inner arches, inner knees, inner groins lifting, and keep that extension in the both arms. Relax the shoulders down. Turn the whole of the right leg out, and then again, face the front. So extend this right arm. Remember, you've got the left and that right side of the trunk as long as the left. You pull up the knees and the thighs. Inhale, and as we exhale now, you're going to extend and go forward down to your brick. Now take the top hand to the waist. So bring this left shoulder back. Keep firmness on the back leg. Revolve and turn the trunk and the chest more round. Uh, work the legs and raise the top arm up. Now turn the throat and the chest. Shoulders back. Good. And breathe. Knees lifting, thighs lifting. See, can you turn further right? You want to bring that right arm and chest more forward. And then I'm here to come up. Turn the feet to face front. And we'll go for the other side. Perfect. So again, making sure that the legs is a good three, three and a half feet apart. And first it's longer in the legs, then you can go wider. So pressurize the feet down, lift from the inner arches and turn the whole of the left leg out. And again, heels in line with the step of the foot. So in, you know, raise this left arm, remember, lengthen the two sides of the throat, extend and go down to the brick. And then take the top hand to the waist. And you want to feel that your two shoulders is down from the ears there. You want to create length in the neck. Taking the right shoulder back now. Elongate the thighs at the back and extend the top arm. Turn the throat and the chest more right. Good. Get firmness. If you can go down to lower with the brick, you can. If you can catch your ankle, that's fine as well. But be just... Try to observe what's happening in the front body. Feel where is the breath touching. You want it to be here, turning the trunk and the chest more. Good. And then on the heel to come up. Turn the feet to face front and jump or step the feet together. So next pose we're going to practice now is uh, reversed or parvorated trichinasana. Or reversed trichinasana as some of us know it by. So we're going to practice from the wall. So here's what we're going to practice. We're going to have a wall close, but don't be tight to the wall with your feet. Remember, you can get the buttocks to touch, but not the heels. So we're going to use a brick. So we'll practice it um, from here. So we're going to be here with our legs as wide. We're going to turn the left foot well in and turn the right leg out. And then turn the hips round to face front. So notice again, you've got heel and line with heel there. 
Now you want to throw that right hip back, left hip forward. Extend this top arm up again. Lengthen as you go forward. Go on extending down to the back. So we're going to stay with the wall here, revolve and turn. So the back leg has to be more. You want to turn the trunk and the chest more round and then extend. Keep, keep height to begin with. Don't be no hurry to go down and then revolve and turn. So keep the arm down and try to work the trunk further to the wall. Bring that right hand back, work the legs and then see can you reach the top arm up. Extend from the bottom arm. And then on here to come up. Turn around like this. So the wall is nice, it gives us a sense that we're heads in line with our tailbone. You're, you can stay with your pose longer and you can work on good alignment. So for us that don't go down easily, I'll show us with the chair as well. So take the legs wide. Good, feel that you're not tight onto the wall with the heels there, that you have room to turn. Now bring your right foot in, turn that right heel more out, and turn the left foot round to face front. So you should evenly have your hips now tight to the wall. Good, keep working strong on the back leg. Extend the right arm. Get the length again on this right side of the throat there as you go down. Go down, take the hand to the brick and revolve. Again, don't revolve and turn yet. Work the legs there. Check the heel and leg with heel. Then revolve and turn. Rub it more around. So to revolve in action. Stamp the feet down and extend the top. Revolve. Keep turning more. Keep the head close to the wall. And then come down. Turn the feet around and walk the legs up. So it's a stronger action than you take a trick on extra. The, the power of this is more. So we're going to be here. Feet about 12 inches off the wall. Um, if you don't touch the floor easily, remember, always have two books or blocks or something handy. So we're going to be here. Sit bones going up the wall there. Pin the sit bones to the wall and come down. So for us that don't come down easily, just have the height here. Keep the abdomen soft and spread. And then we're going to move to the right. So you're going to pin that left foot up to the wall as you extend over to the right. Making sure the buttock doesn't leave here. Feel the whole length on this left side of our trunk there as you lengthen forward this way. Good. Keep coming, work on the inner legs. And then come back to centre, look forward again. And then see, can we go down to the left? So now the right buttock has to stay pressed to the wall. Keep the two sides long. Go on, walk on the hands more forward. Two sides long. Come back to centre again. Push off the, off the wall now and see can we go down low. For us that don't go down lower, we're, we're going to stay with our bricks. We might even be here. Wherever you feel you need to be to get that concave in the back. Lead in the front. Taking the hands further back. And then flip them. Shoulders lift. So shoulders lift. Rust is not there yet. We're going to stay here. We can stay at the wall here if you feel that's better. And then come all the way back up. So we're going to practice again. Reverse probably the trikonasana with the chair. For us that felt that was a bit of a struggle at the wall. So we're going to practice seeing from here. And we're going to be here in the middle of our mat there. Hands on the waist. Take the left heel back to the skirting board and take the right leg forward. Now again, get that grip and action in the outer hips. So everything stems from the pelvis and the hips here. The legs, the trunk, the arms, whatever, all is to extend. So you've got to keep this really firm. Now we're going to extend the left arm up. Good. Are you all okay there? The back heel is touching that skirting board. So keep the back leg firm. 
as you go down. So you're just going to take your elbow down to the, the chair. So notice it's not as far down for us that was using the wall and McConkey there. You're, you're only coming as far as the chair. Then you're going to keep pressing that mount with the big toe down. Pull the right hip back. Revolve and turn. Keep the head and line with the big toe on the front foot. So again, then for us it can go down closer down the chair or down to the legs or maybe the bar. You can go a bit further. Back leg strong. Extend the top arm up. Breathe into that stretch. Good. And come down. Come up and step both feet together. So you don't have to go as low when you're using the chair. And, and you're still getting the exact same benefit. So now we're going to bring our right foot back. And again, slightly turn the foot out about 30 degrees and then take the left leg forward. And then get firmness on that back leg. Turn the hips to face front. Extend that right arm. Lengthen from that right or right foot there as you go down. So as you go down, you come here. So adjust the chair wherever you need to have it there. Keep the head in line with the big toe of the left foot, even though you don't see it. You have a fair idea there. And then revolve and turn. Then make the left, make that left thigh hip strongly back. Keep firmness on the back leg. For us it can go down a bit closer. Go down the legs of the chair, even hold here, maybe here. And then see, can you, you get that grip on it? Or for us, we'll want the, some of us stay here. But notice where is the head. It is in line with our tailbone. So you don't want the head over here or hitting the wall. You want it to be in line. And then come up. Join the both feet together and relax. So then we're going to have the chair like so. Again, we're going to be about 12 inches away from the wall there, and you're going to just allow ourselves to go back. So the wall's very useful, isn't it, for us in yoga? And then we're going to keep the, the chair right up towards the, the top of the thighs there. We're going to lift the buttocks, pin them to the wall. Feel that spread coming all the way down as you come forward. So just don't go dropping right down. Make sure your legs is working. Use the breath. Keep the abdomen soft. Go on lengthening. So use your elbows there to widen. Get extension in the side ribs. And then look forward and come up. Well done, everyone. And we're all back to now. And then we're going to be Mary Kiasna uh, at the wall there. For us to feel that the chair is not high enough, we could use more height, maybe a couple of blocks on top of the chair. We'll see how we get on. So we're going to practice it like so. So you could have amount the blocks. You could have less there. Whatever height that you need, we're going to get ready to practice. So we're going to be here um, and we're going to bring our, as we stand here, some of us will be happy enough with the chair. If you feel that's not high enough for some of us there, then we're going to bring the, get a couple of books or so and get more height. You could even have a stool as well, which is nice. But we're going to bring our left foot up onto the chair. We're not going to be too tight to the wall, especially if you have stiffness in your shoulders. And you're going to, again, raise the arms up. So inhale, and as we exhale, we're going to turn. Feel again that revolve. Make that right thigh hit strongly back. So inhale, and as a further. Feel it's not an aggressive turn, or we're not just being lazy, we're, we're trying to get softness on the exhale. And before you inhale again, try to release and turn further. So it's in here. Good. And one more. And then come back to center. Change, we'll do the other side. 
So we're going to go in again to the other side of the chair so you don't confuse yourselves. Now we're going to bring up our right leg. So you bring up the leg that's closest to the wall. Then you're drawn up on the standing leg, feel that your hips is level, raise the arms up and go to the wall. So we'll heal and as we exhale we're going to turn. Good, and heal. We're going to go further. So feel the whole base of the spine turning there. And here. Further right. Good. Work on that standing leg thigh back more. And coming as far right as you can. And come back to centre. So really nice to get standing twist. Because you've actually got that length on the spine before you even start. So it's very happy to have to practice it that way. So now we're going to do Arda Chandrasana. And we're going to do it again um, at the wall. You can do it with the chair as well. We did it one day with the chair. I'll probably practice it with the chair, first of all, to show you. And then we can practice from a brick. So we're going to use the whole of the mat. So the mat, taking the Taking the right leg out long, feet facing forward, turn the whole of the right leg out. Pull up the knees and the thighs and extend down again. You can take the hand here or down towards the ankle. Keep the ribs soft. Bend that right leg, come a little bit close to the chair there. So come out a bit further. Take the elbow down here to the, to the chair and lift up on the, the raised leg. So again, draw up on the standing leg, extend onto the inner heel of that raised leg, and revolve and turn. Good. Pull up the knees and the thighs. Get that gripping action in the outer hips, then come down, back into you take the tripping asana, and come all the way back up. And we'll go to the other side. So again, for us that needs to just use a brick there if you can, or just take the hand to the floor. So I'm just giving options for us that's fairly new and hasn't done a lot of yoga, and probably a second to practice at home, and <laughs> have a new teacher there to allow them. So again, work the both legs now, turn the whole of the left leg out, extend down to the left. Head back, knees and thighs lifted. Good. Stamp the feet firmly down and turn the trunk of the chest. Bend that front leg to a good right angle and again draw the back leg in and come up. So as you come up, you want to feel that you're drawn up on the standing leg and extend in this raised leg. So extend, revolve and turn the trunk of the chest. Lift the head to look up if you can. Get that grip and action in the outer hips there. Feel that compactness. Good. And then you can bend. Come back down. Take your time. Come down. And do you take a trick and asana? Which you can do really well. And come up after all that. Try to be round. Step the feet together. Well done, everyone. So we're all going to get ready now to sit on the chair. And if you've any tension in your lower back at all, this is really nice for the back. So you come down gradually, have the feet wider than the chair there, and then catch hold of the back bar of the chair or the front, and just allow the head to go down. Now your throat is ascending. Breathe and soften into that stretch. Feel that you're keeping your abdomen soft. Good. Just allow the spine to lengthen down long. Good, so stay there. And then slowly raise the head up and come all the way back. Perfect. So we're going to finish off our standing poses today with um, Prasarita Padotanasana. 
And the aim for us that needs to have the chair in front, please. Um, it's really nice if you're not coming all the way down to the floor. Um, and as you can have two bricks if you don't, if the hands don't touch the floor um, as well. So wherever we are. So we're going to start off being at the wall. So take the legs wide, don't be too close to the wall when you, because once she's come forward, you're going to hit the wall there with the buttocks. So be forward slightly. Now take the hands to the waist there and bring the elbows back. Roll the shoulders back and down. Look up and come forward. Good, come down to the mat. Then from here, you can step the feet back. And just wherever we need to go there, um, turn the toes in, press your outer feet down, and extend well forward. So you want to keep the thighs hitting back to the wall. You want to feel the, the sit bones touch the wall. Spread and open the back of the legs as you lengthen forward. Go on extending, and then walk the hands down if your elbows touch the floor and you look up at the head. Good, shoulders lifted, then walk the hands back and just allow the head to go down. Shoulders lifted. Shoulders up, keep the legs still working. For us, the head doesn't come down easily. You're just going to allow the spine to grow longer and it'll eventually come down. And then we're going to look forward, walk the feet in, and slowly come up. Start your tight to the wall there. Well done, everyone, and we're all going to come down. So we're going to come down to our mat there, and we're going to sit in dandas. Feet to the wall. Feeling that we're on the sit bones there. You're spreading the, the buttocks left sideways, keeping the chest Lifted, roll the shoulders back. So keep the legs really firm as they go down onto the mat. Then extend the arms up. Look up. Go on, lengthen the sides of the throat long, and then come down. So for us that want to do half a handstand, we're going to use the block behind here just to check our distance. We can have the hands sideways or face in front, uh, whichever you prefer, and we're going to go up and have a uh, hands. So again, keep that firmness in the arms there. Walk in and go up. And then just come down to wherever you feel is your half. Shoulder blades in and up. Good, and come down. Well done. So, nice to practice the half there, or you can even practice with the chair as well, which is good. So we're going to come down to our mass now. We're going to grab hold of a, a blanket, and you can kneel up on the blanket. We're going to sit in Varasta. So maybe I'll show a sideways on um, here. So if you do not come into this pose easily, you would spread the calves out there and sit in between the both heels. For us that don't do this sit easy like this here, we're going to have support under the box. So you could have either a block there, or you could have um, less than that, maybe a blanket, um, and we're going to be here. So you want all ten toes to go back and you want to feel that your little toe side of your foot is firmly down. And then raise the arms up. We're going to do Jerry Dasna with the arms here. So as you raise the arms up, you're going to take the right elbow over the left, join the palms together, lift the elbows and take the hands away from the face. Good. Keep the elbows up higher and the hands away from the face. Go on lifting and then release. Change, we'll do that. So arms up again. Feel where the breath is in this pose. So you're going to turn the palms again. That's it. Get the elbows lifting higher. Hands away from the face. 
So here you should feel the breath in the back chest. Really opens up the back of the, the chest here and the lungs. And even if you don't cross the hands, just get the cross like, like so. Maybe you might get a finger or two in there. And then come all the way back. Well done. And then we're going to be gone. You can actually, so if you can still sit here comfortably. We're going to take the right arm back, slide it up in between the shoulder blades, catch hold of the elbow and bring it down. And then that feels that it's in the dorsal area, that right hand. So extend the top arm, catch hold with the two hands, and then bring that right shoulder back. Relax in the facial muscles there, and go on lifting that top elbow up further. And release. Change, we'll do the other side. Then take the left arm out to the side. Take it right back. Again, ease it up in between the shoulder blades there. And then extend the top. Good. Get a big long extension there as you come down. So this top arm needs to be in line with the head, not away out to the side. You want to feel the outer arms rolling in. And the inner arms rolling out. Good. And then coming all the way back. And release the arms down. So a good bit of work on the arms and the shoulders then. Last one, then we're going to extend the arms out for the arms anyway. We're going to press into the heel of the hand, join the palms together, and turn that little finger side right up the back. So again, we're going to be here. And as you press the palms together, press the palms together there, bring the, the waist back, shoulders back, Feel that opening now, feel the breath is in the front of the chest. Good. And then come on all the way back. Release the arms down. So for us here now, we're going to sit on, um, again, you can either sit on a blanket or sit on a block. Whichever you feel is the first. So I'm going to sit on uh, a block. And then we're going to just take the legs out wide, up the beast to Konasana stay, but we're, we're going to bend up our right leg. And as we bend the right leg up, take the left leg further out to the side, raise the left arm up, and take the left elbow over your right knee, and then revolve and turn. So if you're sitting on a raise, make sure you still have a raise round behind for the hand. I'll just show us sideways on here. So this leg's out wide. You're bending up that leg and you're revolving and turning. So inhale, exhale, turn. Good, inhale, and as we exhale, we're going to turn further. Good. Keep pressing that right foot firmly down. Try to get as much of the right the left arm over the right knee as you can. Sit tall and come back to centre. Now okay, change, we'll do the other side. So bend up the left uh, leg here. Take the right foot further out to the right. Extend this right arm up and go over to the outside of your left knee. So inhale, exhale, turn. Pavarita up the base of Kalata. So again, and here, and we're going to turn, which one is it? This one. So you can all see better now. Turn further right, good. And here, and come back to center. And just let the legs go out, good. Well done, cross again and swash the gas now. And as you cross the legs and swash the gas now, Feel that you're turning now to, to go over your right leg. So you're sitting tall, extend the left arm up, inhale, and as we exhale, we're going to, yeah, we're going to lengthen the two sides of our trunk evenly over that right leg. So if you don't want to sit on a height there, just come down. Inhale. Good. 
feel the whole left side of our trunk is again lengthening. And come all the way back to centre. Good. Change the cross of the legs. Good. And then extend the right arm up and lengthen as you go over your left leg. So turn the trunk and the chest, lengthen the two sides of our trunk evenly. Revolve, good. Turn the trunk more right and stretch the two sides. Keeping that right hip back and down and come all the way back to centre. Look, and relax it. Now we're going to join the both feet together and bat a kalasana. So as we join the feet, sit on some height there. I keep feeling like your groins is very tight. Join the feet together. For us that um, is fairly stiff in the groins, we're going to place a brick in here between the both feet. And as you place the brick in there, you're going to try to press on that, that block, uh, roll these inner thighs well out, and have your back pillow on. So at least you get your supported up right there if you have the back pillow on. And then take the fingertips here, go on pressing the heels in more, and you should feel that grid open on the inner groins. Pressing the feet firmly into the brick. And then when you remove the brick, you will stay longer if you are practicing probably on your own. And if you remove the brick then notice how you can allow the knees to go down further. So you lift up and you will come closer to the feet. Again bring the hands down, lift your seat off the floor and see can you come closer. And notice if you come closer there, you're allowing the knees to go down more. <laughs> Good. And then release out of that. Well done. Just taking the, the legs out now. So we're going to get ready now to take up the beat to Kalasana. So you're sitting on the corner edge of your blanket again. Corner edge of the blanket there. If you need to sit down on the edge, if not, you can sit on the floor. Or you can have the back to the wall. So again, take the legs wide. Take the hands round behind. Lift the chest up more, lift the sides of the trunk more up, and then feel the whole back of the legs as touching the mat. Notice how the inner knees don't like to come down much. So try to get that extension again, from the inner groins to the inner, inner heels. Extend the arms up. Lengthen the inner legs more, and inhale, and as we exhale, we're going to come forward. Now again, you can come forward to the chair. And here, and it's that further. Abdomen soft, and here, further down. And then the hands here, just to the big toe. Um, so you're catching them with the first two fingers, and sit tall. Shoulders down. Good, chest is open. So allow the big toe there to bring you more forward as you try to get that more of a lift up through the front bar. And relax and smile. <laughs> Nearly there, keeping the legs hitting strongly back. Good. And then come all the way back up. Bend the both knees in and join the legs again. So we're going to practice Sadhasana. Um, we're going to sit with her, uh, take our right foot in and allow the knee to go down. Then take on the left foot and allow uh, again the sole of the foot to look up to the ceiling. Feel like you've got heel in line with heel and then in line with the, the seam on your bottoms there. And see how well the knees go down and this goes. So it's a nice one to practice at the start. Then if you can post your toes in there and allow the knee to go down. So it's the final pose, but if not, stay with the both feet on the, the floor. You can feel this whole roll in action and sit hasna, and we're going to take the hands to the knees and sit really tall. Good. Change, we'll do the other side. So now we've got our right foot in first this time, now we're going to bring in our left. 
left first then, good, and then the right there, allow you again to feel that you're keeping the knees wide, heels in line with heel, and then you're going to lift up again, slip the toes in, so you're coasting all the toes in there, and then the knees goes out. And then you can feel that opening again on your inner groin. Chest is lifted. Hands to the knees. Staying tall. And then coming all the way back from that. So we extend the both legs out. So again, we're going to practice now um, Seki Banda. We're going to lie down on our um, support. So here's the way we're going to practice today. We're going to have it that we've got the blanket for the head here, or for the shoulders. You can like just grab another blanket there. has been very good to open up the back of the lungs and it helps solve the COVID-19. So we're all going to get ready I think now for relaxation. So if you want to lie down and put Bariti Cranny with the legs up the wall, have support on the buttocks if you wish as well, 
like a bolster there or a couple of blankets or blocks, whatever you need, or you can lie with the legs resting on the chair. Have your legs resting up onto the sofa or whatever you've got close. And we're going to get ready. So again, can you put a BM Savasa? The Savasana is where we lie down um, or Vaparidi Krani to see, or and we just allow ourselves to, to just let go completely. Allow the mind to be open and the body will follow. Just take awareness to the breath. Awareness to sounds inside and outside of the room. Awareness to where the breath is touching. Feeling it safe to live with that.
just being aware of the pause between the inhalation and the exhalation. Thank you all so much for joining in. And you can stay there for a few moments longer. Thank you all. Namaste.